All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Hey, Happy New Year. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, give the Lord praise for a new year. Look at this. New year. We got people cleaning already. Isn't that a blessing to see people? get? Give this man a hand, somebody. All right. All right. We, we have a very, very, very extra special service for you today. We have a new year, and we're installing new pastors. Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone who's here and welcome everyone online to the ordination and installation service for Pastor DJ Carter and, after today, Pastor Jenny Faulkner. Amen. So good. So good to have you here. I'm so glad that you came. I hope that you made some good New Year's resolutions. I hope that you came in here ready to impact the Lord and impact the world. Amen. I know God's ready to speak to us. And we're going to have some fried chicken. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hey, everybody that's not clapping, I'm going to eat yours. Don't worry about it. I'm all over it. If you're not excited, that's okay. I'm excited enough for all of us. Let's get up on our feet. One quick announcement. We are starting the baby bottle campaign in anticipation of uh, Sanctity of Life Sunday. You can find the baby bottles in the box on the back table. So at, later on when you're getting your drink and you're getting your food, make sure you grab one of those baby bottles. Put your spare change in it. Bring it back uh, at the end of January. I think it's January 22nd. I'm looking at you like you know. You don't know either. Uh, bringing it back January 22nd, and we're going to turn those in. Amen. Last year, remember, we gave over $500 to the Pregnancy Center doing that. And so we're going to do it twice this year, once in the beginning of the year and then once in the fall. Amen. We're, God's pro-life all the time. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, I have come so that you can have life and have it abundantly. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then let's worship. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this special day. We praise you and thank you for calling all of us to yourself. And Lord, we thank you that you have called DJ and Jenny into your service. Lord, we just pray, oh Lord, that you will fill this place. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that you have brought us to this moment. We thank you that you are making all things new, that you are the God of second, third, fourth, and fifth chances. And we're thankful, Lord, Lord, that you will complete the work that you started in all of us. Lord, we thank you for the call that you have put on DJ and Jenny's life. And Lord, we just pray this morning that you will be glorified, that Jesus will be lifted up, that the Spirit's presence will be felt by all, and that you will call some to yourself to salvation, Lord, to encouragement. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Into your glory 
ourselves in your presence.
Let's pray this morning. Lord, we love you. It's a blessing to be in your house this morning, Lord. Just thank you for everything that you've given us the previous year and looking forward to the future, Lord. Be with everybody here today, Lord. It's a special day. Be with Jenny. Be with DJ. Lord, let them know that the church loves them, Lord. We love them. Be with all the pastors in here, Lord. We love you and praise your name. Amen. There's nothing worth more that would ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence,
us with your presence this morning but we are so unworthy we are so unworthy of you you are a holy righteous perfect God dwelling in inapproachable light and despite all that the word became flesh and dwelt among us Lord you have chosen you have decided to call us You've decided to partner with us. You've decided to use us. You created us. We are your workmanship. Created for good works that you have prepared in advance. And Lord, we're so grateful this morning that it's by grace we have been saved. It's not of work so that none of us can boast. All of us have to look up. And all we can say is thank you, Jesus. All of us have to look up and say, oh, wretched people that we are, but you clothe us with the righteousness of Christ. Lord, we just thank you this morning that you're still calling people. You're calling people right now. You're calling all of us to yourself. And then you call us into your service. Lord, it is an honor and a privilege to serve the living God. And Lord, we just take a moment, Lord, before we move on, just to say thank you. I'm so thankful, oh God. We have an opportunity right now for a fresh start, for a new day, for a new moment. So Lord, thank you. Thank you. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to invite Miss Jenny Faulkner to share her testimony of her calling with us. And after we hear from Miss Jenny, we're going to hear from Pastor DJ. Y'all give her an Antioch welcome. Come on now. Act like this is the first time you've seen her. Come on now. Thank you. Good morning. I'm already wrecked. So I just want to say it's the powerful name of Jesus. 
that would take an alcoholic girl doing everything wrong and call her to be a pastor. I want to read Psalm 116 because it is my testimony. <laughs> I'm passionately in love with God because he listens to me. He hears my prayers and answers them. As long as I live, I'll keep praying to him, for he stoops down to listen to my heart's cry. Death once stared me in the face, and I was close to slipping into its dark shadows. I was terrified and overcome with sorrow. I cried out to the Lord, God, come and save me. He was so kind, so gracious to me because of his passion toward me. He made everything right, and he restored me. So I, I can't see it. <laughs> So I've learned from my experience that God protects the vulnerable. For I was broken and brought low, but he answered me and came to my rescue. Now I can say to myself and to all, relax and rest, be confident and serene. For the Lord rewards fully those who simply trust in him. God has rescued my soul from death's fear and dried my eyes of many tears. He's kept my feet firmly on his path and strengthened me so that I may please him and walk before Yahweh in his fields of life. Even when it seems I'm surrounded by many liars and my own fears, and though I'm hurting in my suffering and trauma, I still stay faithful to God and speak words of faith. So now what can I ever give back to God to repay him for the blessings he's poured out on me? I will lift up his cup of salvation and praise him extravagantly for all he's done for me. And I will fulfill the promise I made to God in the presence of his gathered people. When one of God's holy lovers dies, it's costly to the Lord, touching his heart. Lord, because I am your loving servant, you have broken open my life and freed me from my chains. Now I worship you passionately and bring you my sacrifice of praise, drenched with thanksgiving. I'll keep my promise to you, God, in the presence of your gathered people, just like I said I would. I will worship you here in your living presence, in the temple here in Scottsville. <laughs> I will worship and sing hallelujah, for I praise you, Lord. And I have found my tribe here. You, Antioch. <laughs> You, Antioch, are a beautiful people, so rich in mercy and generosity. You are the hands and feet of Jesus. God made it clear to us in the fall of 2021 that we were to come serve this house and to be all in. We had only come a handful of times, but we were instantly family. We were, we, um, were grafted in through your warmth and love. I started praying for God to put this congregation on my heart. Like I would come here on Mondays and just come in the sanctuary and was praying, God, would you put this congregation on my heart? I've been a part of another church for over 20 years. So when we heard this call to come here, I said, God, you're going to have to put these people on my heart. And um, one Sunday I came and Angela came running up to me and she said, I'm so glad you're here. God has been waking me up in the middle of the night to pray for you. And God said, you prayed that, you, that I would put this congregation on your heart, but I'm going to put you on theirs. And one Saturday morning, I had been praying with a friend, and this heart cry came out of me that I didn't realize was still there. And we just started weeping and praying, and I said, I still have a heart to serve the youth. God called me to serve youth, and he's not done with me there yet. And we just prayed and prayed and prayed, and that was on Saturday. And on Sunday morning, I came in, and there was these posters up here. And one of them said how sweet it was to be a youth leader. And I snapped a picture of it, and I sent it to that friend and said, here's my sign. I didn't dream that Sunday that I would be here today being ordained as your youth pastor. I just knew I was called to serve this house and this family of believers. I love you all so much, and I know I'm home. Pastor Jenny. And Pastor Dave are two hard pastors to follow. Uh, but 
But the scripture that came to my mind when I thought about a testimony to share with you all this morning was from Proverbs 24. And this, these verses really changed my life when I started thinking about what God was calling me to do. And it says, if you do nothing in a difficult time, your strength is limited. It says, rescue those being taken off to death and save those stumbling towards slaughter. If you say, but we didn't know about this, won't he who weighs the heart consider it? Won't he who protects your life know it? Won't he repay every person according to his works? Then it says this, eat honey, my son, for it is good. And the honeycomb is sweet to the palate. Realize that wisdom is the same for you. If you find it, you will have a future and your hope will never fade. And so I, I shared just a little bit of this in my story, but my, my parents had me at a very young age and they had no desire whatsoever to have a baby. And I think about how many times in my life God has rescued me or has saved me or has held back death for me. And I just think about how good it is to be in fellowship with people who are also concerned about those who are stumbling towards slaughter. So that's how I became connected to Antioch for real, for real. Now, my real relationship to Antioch goes back even further. See, when I was two years old, I tugged on my pastor's robe and I said, I want to be baptized. And they said, we have something called the age of accountability and you're way too young to get baptized. So he said, but if you turn, when you turn three, I knock this over. I see Dave is concerned about it. There you go. Water's dripping again. Somebody else have to pick it up later. Uh, but when God said that to me, that, that I was called to serve him, to worship him, I was just two years old. And they said, well, come back when you're three. So, I, so on my third birthday, I tugged on his robe again. And I said, I'm three now. And they didn't want to baptize me. So they had to go to somebody's house and do it in a pool. And for years and years and years, I kept going to their church and I kept serving and I kept worshiping at that Antioch Baptist Church. And I was called and the Lord made me a minister and I've served a lot of places. But I want to tell you one thing, that I've never received so much love, had so many brothers and sisters and friends so quickly anywhere other than this Antioch Baptist Church. So I thank God for this family that you've been for my little kids, for this family that you've been for my wife. And I grew up and I always thought I was too black for the white church and too white for the black church. And I never knew where I would fit. And I'm so glad that I found a home as well. So thanks be to the Lord. I almost slipped on that water. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, we do. We love you, DJ. We love you, Jenny. And Antioch, you know I, I love all of you. This is such a historic day for Antioch Church. God has truly blessed us by sending DJ Carter and Jenny Faulkner to serve his vision here among us. And y'all know how Pastor Dave loves a bargain. I'm cheap. And I believe it's called, we call it being a wise steward. Y'all know I'm stingy. So we had, God gave us a two-for-one special this morning. We're doing an ordination for Miss Jenny Faulkner and an installation for Jenny and DJ to install them into the positions here at Antioch. We've heard their testimonies of how God has called them each into his special service. And today we acknowledge and we affirm that calling. The word ordain means to appoint, to elect, to choose by stretching out the hand. And the word is used many times in Scripture to refer to God calling people, and it's also used when uh, people within the church or congregation recognize and call other people. To install means to put or place something into position ready for use. And I'm so glad that we have two candidates here that not only are they ready to be used, they've already been being used by the Lord here at Antioch Baptist Church. 
In Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, the church at Antioch heard the Holy Spirit calling Paul and Barnabas. It says, in the church that was at Antioch, isn't that amazing? There were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, the Cyrenian, Menean, a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work I have called them to. Then after they fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. Two important Greek words in that text. The first one, translated as they were ministering to the Lord, is where we get the English word for liturgy. That's where we get the word for order of service. And actually the word ordained comes from the root word of, of order. And so it's as we are worshiping and ministering to the Lord, that's what this is supposed to be all about. It's not just about us being ministered to. Come on, somebody. It's about us ministering to him, declaring his faithful love, declaring his goodness, praising him and lifting him up. And as we do that, his, his presence comes and he speaks to us. How many of you know God is not mute? Amen? Every time you need a word from God, all you have to do is open the word of God. Amen? Amen. And as they were ministering, and it says that they placed their hands on them, that's where we get the idea of ordination. See, our job as a church is simply to recognize what God has already said and done. And I love it because, Jenny, there are people that have told you that you couldn't serve in this position. I'm here to remind us that God is the one who calls. Come on, some. God is the one who calls. We see the fruit of your life. We see the fruit and we acknowledge it. And we say, yes, that is clearly the fruit of the Spirit. God is working. And DJ, the devil tried to take you out when you were in your mama's womb. But God said, I have appointed you. I have a plan for you. And no weapon formed against God's people can prosper. Amen. Today, we, the people of Antioch Baptist Church, Bear witness to the Holy Spirit that Jenny and DJ have received the call to gospel preaching ministry and that the Holy Spirit has specifically led them to serve him here at Antioch. God has raised you up and called you for his service. And this morning we confirm God's call as his representatives. We set Jenny apart as a preacher of God's word and as a minister of his church. And we will install Jenny as youth pastor and DJ as associate pastor. I'm so glad that we serve a God who calls people. God's been calling people since day one. It all started in Genesis, in the very beginning book, in the very first verse. God said, God called creation into existence. God said, let there be light, and guess what? Boom. Before there was a sun, before there were billions of stars, there was light. You know why? Because God said so. And after he created us, he began calling people. After he called creation into existence and created mankind, he calls people. I said this before in my prayer, but I'm going to remind you, God calls all people first to himself. Then he calls people into his service. We say it this way here at Antioch. God saved you. Come on, somebody, to send you. Amen. God didn't save you to sit you. God saved you to send you. He called Noah to build. He called Abraham to leave his hometown and journey to an unknown destination. He called Moses out of a burning bush that was on fire but wasn't consumed. He called Joshua to be strong and courageous. He called Deborah to step up and be a judge and lead his wayward people. He called Samuel as a young boy to be a prophet. He called David to be a king while he was tending some stinking smelly sheep. Isaiah heard the call of God saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, here am I, Lord, send me. Jesus called a bunch of smelly, illiterate, uneducated fishermen to follow him. And he calls all of us to follow him. Jenny and DJ have heard God's call. And they answered it. We have heard God's call and we affirm it. God is calling them to his service. And I believe that God's not just calling them. I believe God's calling others in this room here today to himself. We're going to have a special service. We're going to have a special time, but we're still going to preach a little bit. Amen. God calls the wandering and God calls the wayward. And then God calls his workers. Isaiah 55 says, come, 
Everyone who is thirsty, come to the water, and you without silver, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without silver and without cost. Why do you spend silver on what is not food and your wages on what does not satisfy? Listen to me and eat what is good, and you will enjoy the choicest of foods. Pay attention and come to me. Listen so that you will live. I will make a permanent covenant with you on the basis of the faithful kindness of of David, since I made him a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the peoples. So you will summon a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you will run to you. For the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. Let the wicked one abandon his way, and the sinful one abandon his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord so that he may have compassion on them. And our God will freely forgive. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For just as the rain and the snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth and making it germinate and sprout and providing seed to the sower and food to the eater, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please, and it will prosper what I send it to do. And you will indeed go out with joy and be peacefully guided. And the mountains and the hills will break into singing before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of a thorn bush, a cypress will come up. And instead of the briar, a myrtle will come up. They will stand as a monument for the Lord, an everlasting sign that will not be destroyed. Do you hear Jesus calling you today? He says, come, anyone who's thirsty. Come. If you're broke, good news is salvation is free. Come on, somebody. And you couldn't buy it if you had all the money in the world. Jesus called out to the beaten and the worn out in Matthew 11. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you take up your yoke and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I hope you hear God's calling you today. God is calling out to some to bring you into relationship with him to give you the love that you have been looking for in all the wrong places. He's calling out to some who are weary and burdened, and you're going to have a chance at the end of this special service to answer that call. And when you hear God's call, do yourself a favor and answer it. And if you miss God's call, come on somebody, don't worry, he will call again. Aren't you glad? If you, if you miss God's call this morning, he's going to call you back. And when he does, answer it. Answer it. For the Bible says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. DJ and Jenny, I want to read a prayer to you written by Bob Moorhead. He writes this, God, give us those ribbed with the steel of your Holy Spirit. Those who will not flinch when the battle is fiercest. Those who won't compromise or fade when the enemy rages. God, give us those who cannot be bought battered or badgered by the enemy. Those who will pay the price, make the sacrifice, stand the ground, and hold the torch of truth high. God, give us those obsessed with the principles true to your word, those stripped of self-seeking and a yearning for security, those who will pay any price for freedom and go to any lengths for truth. God, give us those delivered from mediocrity, those with vision high, pride low, faith wide, love deep, and patience long. Those who will dare to march the drumbeat of a distant drummer. Those who will not surrender principles of truth in order to accommodate their peers. God, give us those more interested in scars than medals. More committed to conviction than convenience. Those who will give their life for the, in, for the eternal instead of indulging their flesh in their lives for a moment in time. God, give us those who are fearless in the face of danger, calm in the midst of pressure, bold in the midst of opposition. God, give us those who will pray earnestly, work long, preach clearly, and wait patiently. Give us those whose walk is by faith, whose behavior is by principles, 
whose dreams are from heaven and whose book is the Bible. God, give us those who are equal to the task. Those are the men and the women that the church of Jesus Christ needs today. And DJ Carter, you are such a man. And Jenny Faulkner, you are such a woman. Yeah. May both of you be faithful to what God has appointed you to for such a time as this. I'm going to ask Reverend Skip Wallace from the Baptist General Association of Virginia to come and give a charge to the candidates. And after that, Elder Tommy Aldridge. I'm glad you came, Tommy. I didn't see you. I was getting a little nervous. After that, Elder Tommy Aldridge is going to come and charge us as a congregation. Ready to go, brother. Thank you. How many of you uh, were up until midnight last night to see in the new year? <laughs> How many of you woke up this morning and thought, oh my gosh, I, I'm going to church? Don't raise your hand. You don't have to raise your hand on that one. But how many of you are glad you're here today? I am so glad to be here. Dave, thank you for inviting me to be here. Uh, Jenny, I'm excited for you. I, I'm so glad to know your story. I've met Jenny before and was able to hear her story. Uh, DJ, I'm so glad to be here and to meet you today. Thank you for letting me be a part of this service today. Jenny told me, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, Jenny, but right before the service, she said, I. As a younger child had somebody say to me, she said, I, I wonder if I'll ever be in the church, leading in the church. And, and the lady said, no, you're just going to be somebody who's just going to attend on Sundays. That's all you're going to be. Aren't you glad people can be wrong? And aren't you glad that God is never wrong? And aren't you glad that God calls those that other people don't see? I, I had some, Jenny... I went back to my church that I grew up in in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, and they asked me to come preach the 90th anniversary about 15 years ago. And I was there greeting people, and one of my old Sunday school teachers came up, and, and I said, wow, did you ever think I'd be in this position? And I thought she'd say, oh, Skip, I saw the wonder in you and the majesty of God in you back when you were eight years old. And she looked at me and she said, no, I never thought you'd be here. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God sees what other people don't see? I love the call of Jeremiah. The call of Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, 4 through 9 tells us some powerful things about how God works in our lives. I want to read that to you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 9 says this, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But, don't you love that there are buts in the Bible? And I need that, I, I mean that in a positive way, okay? A good way. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Throughout the Bible, we find a God who is a God who calls. Yes, he calls specific people to specific tasks at specific times, just as we're celebrating today. But I want to emphasize something that Dave has already emphasized this morning. He begins that call with a call into relationship. He begins that call by saying, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. If you're here today and you haven't found your rest in Jesus Christ, if you haven't found your relationship in Jesus Christ, that's the beginning point. He begins by calling us into relationship. Jenny, DJ, you're here today because God called you into relationship with him. 
We're here to set you apart. We're here to recognize your gifts, your talents, your ability. But we're first here to recognize that God has a special relationship with you. He called you. He knew you even before you were two years old. He was talking to you in your mama's womb. He was preparing you and, and anointing you and getting you ready for where you are today. Hallelujah. God calls us into relationship. Thank you for your stories. I'm so excited that God has led you here to this church. And I'm so excited for this church that you've recognized God's calling in these two lives. And that you're doing something that not many churches, many Baptist churches would be willing to do. Uh, there's not many Baptist churches that are predominantly white that are going to call a black man to be a pastor in their church. Thank you for not seeing his skin color. Now, now listen, I believe in diversity. Many people look and they say, well, God doesn't see color. I think that's wrong because Revelation tells us that all tribes and all nations are going to be worshiping at the throne. And so I'm so glad that DJ is the color that he is because he brings diversity to this congregation that needs diversity. But thank you for not seeing him as a black man that doesn't belong in a white church. Thank you for seeing him as a man who has been called by God and gifted by God to be in the position to lead this church into the future. Wow. Not many Baptist churches are going to call a female to be a pastor of anything. But one of my favorite passages is Luke 8. And people don't realize this. In Luke 8, uh, there's a story of, of Jesus who is calling and leading and directing people. And in Luke 8, it says, after this, ver verse 1, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons have come out. And Jenny, thank you for letting Jesus cast the demon of alcohol out of you. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others, many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. And listen, you know, we miss so much by not knowing the original language. And, and that's what's so important about having pastors and other leaders helping direct this. You know, that, that, that Greek word helping support them is the word diakonia. You know, you know what word we get diakonia in English? Deacon. You know the first deacons mentioned in the Bible were the women who were deaconing Jesus. God, God doesn't look at our gender when he calls us. God looks at our gifts and our talents and our abilities and what he's given to us. Thank you, Antioch Baptist Church, for your calling of Jenny to this position and your ordaining her today. But you know, when I read this story in Jeremiah, Jeremiah's response is the response that we, many of us have. Lord, I can't speak. I'm, I'm too young. Moses also said he couldn't speak. Isaiah said he was a man of unclean lips. Peter asked Jesus to leave him because he was a sinful man. And, and here's one thing that I, I know I've heard from Jenny and I'm sure I'd hear from DJ, is that we all come to the point where we realize when we're called by God that we are not worthy. You know, we read scripture passages like all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And there's none righteous, no, not one. And we love to quote those verses to non-Christians. <laughs> but you know what? 
Paul wrote that to the church at Rome. Paul wrote that to Christians, not to non-Christians. And it applies to non-Christians, absolutely, but it applies to you and me. I'm not righteous. I'm not worthy. And it's only when we come to the point that we realize that that then God's grace takes over. DJ and Jenny, I don't mean this being negative or being mean, but in and of yourselves, you're not worthy. But hallelujah, aren't you glad we serve a God who is worthy? And his worthiness comes in and lives in us. And then we're able to see wonderful accomplishments, not because of who we are or what we do, but because of who he is and what he does through us. Thank you, too, for recognizing that. And then the final thing I see in this passage in Jeremiah is that we need to be aware of God's presence in our life. And he does call us to then go. He doesn't call us to sit. He calls us to go. God said, go where I send you and say what I command you. He said, do not be afraid. I am with you. I will rescue you. There will be times when you two need to be rescued. And I'm sure that you've already recognized that already. You've both been in churches already. And, and, and we know we have an enemy who's roaring like a lion, ready to devour us, as Peter tells us. So, so we have a terrible enemy. Unfortunately, sometimes we have enemies in churches, too. And that's when it can hurt. Antioch, let me challenge you and encourage you. And boy, it sounds like you're doing a wonderful job of this. Keep encouraging your pastors. Keep loving your pastors. They're fighting a battle that, that, uh, that is discouraging sometimes. It's disheartening sometimes. It's difficult sometimes that doesn't get the, the acknowledgement and the praise that sometimes they should get, and they need it. They're people just like you. Please keep encouraging your pastors. DJ and Jenny, do not be afraid. I am with you and will rescue you. And then finally, I have put my words in your mouth. Let me encourage you to be careful what you say. You know, when we're young, we teach our kids this little song, oh, be careful little eyes what you see, oh, be careful little hands what you touch, oh, be careful little mouths what you say. James tells us that the tongue is a dangerous thing. God has put his words in your mouth. But even as pastors, sometimes we want to say some things we shouldn't say. Sometimes we want to speak words that we want to say, man, this is from God, but we know deep within ourselves, this is just from me. So be careful with your mouth. Read the scriptures. Encourage each other. Challenge each other. Talk to others. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you regularly. Be careful what you say. Because these people are listening to your words closely. And they're meaningful to them. They want to hear a word from God from you. So when you speak, Lord, help me to say the words that are encouraging and challenging and motivating. But understand this. God says, I have put my words in your mouth. So don't be afraid to speak. Just be careful what you say. I'm going to ask the two of you if you'll come up here, and I'm going to have a challenge to you, read a challenge to you, and would ask you to respond. So if you'll just, I'll tell you what, why don't you just stand right down here? No, I'm going to, you're right. Come on up here, right by me. I'm going to change my mind here. You two just stand right together, right over here. DJ, you have been called to be associate pastor. Jenny, you have been called to be youth pastor of Antioch Baptist Church. Do you 
take these people to be your people, this field of labor to be your field, without reservation of spirit, mind, or heart? Do you promise to give yourself faithfully to prayer, to service, to ministry, and to be a good shepherd or good shepherds of this flock, ministering to the needs of all alike? Will you speak to the point to point others to Jesus through word and deed and to further disciple all who are under your watch care? If wronged, will you forgive as you have been forgiven? And even sometimes if you haven't been forgiven. And will you seek to live at peace with all people? Through the gifts, talents, and abilities given to you by God, Will you lead the members of Antioch Baptist Church in the ways of Christ, relying upon the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and strength? Amen. Amen. Love you too. God bless you. A lot of y'all know me, and one thing I think y'all all know about me, those who do know me, is I'm not a public speaker by no stretch of the imagination. And I thought long and hard and prepared something uh, to deliver the charge to the church this morning as we go forward for Jenny and DJ. But I didn't know what I was going to open up with. I didn't know how I was going to start it. And it's amazing how the Lord works. And when I walked in here this morning and I sat down and I listened to Jenny and I listened to DJ, the thing that I found that um, drew it all together for me was the love that they have for the Lord. And when I say, because we're going to find out as we deliver the charge, as I deliver the charge to the church this morning, is that love is what binds it all together. Without that, we are nothing but clean symbols. We all know that. And I'm not talking about the type of love as the world sees it, because we know a lot of times how that is. That, that type of love is emotional. So many times it can be infatuation or lust or anything like that. And the world defines that often as love. They say it's love. But that's not love. That's not true love. We're talking about God's love. We're talking about sacrificial love. And we know that the words that Jenny spoke and the words that DJ spoke were true love because of what? Because of action. The actions that they take, the service, it's a sacrificial type of love. And that's what each of us should have. And as we go into the scripture this morning, I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 12 and 13 I want you to listen what the Apostle Paul has to say he says and we beseech you brethren to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and admonish admonish means to instruct to advise advise and to warn and to esteem them very highly and I want you to listen to what he ended it with in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Paul gives these three commands to the church concerning the actions toward those who labor among them. When they are fulfilling their ministries, we have certain responsibilities to Jenny and DJ. We don't get off scot-free. There's a charge to us as well as a charge to them. And Paul sets these in order and shows the purpose for the church. It's to know them. He says that in verse 12, and that's to understand where they're coming from, understand their teaching, and recognize them as a teacher and to follow them. 
And we have to come to the realization as we submit ourselves under their leadership that, that Jenny and DJ as well as ourselves are not perfect in any stretch or form of the imagination. We all fail. We have to be ready to forgive. We have to be ready to extend grace just as our Lord and Savior extends grace and forgiveness to us. But it said recognize them as your teacher and follow them. That's why we're doing this today because they labor over us and they have spiritual authority over us. Paul admonished the church at Thessalonica to do, do this. He said, I admonish you to do this for the individuals before us today. Respect Jenny and DJ and follow them and love them and pray for them every day. And ask God to watch over them and keep them from falling and to give them knowledge and wisdom to lead us in their ministries. Paul said to esteem them in love. And what I'm talking about this morning, how we esteem them in love, is the doing the very thing that Paul instructs us to do through the Scriptures this morning. It says, look to them for admonishment, for spiritual guidance. Seek their prayers for us in all situations. Submit to their leadership of us in their ministries. And all that's tied together with that word that we're talking about this morning, with love. Because when we do that, we honor God and we honor His word. And we all want to do that. We want to honor God and His word. But that word submission, <laughs> a lot of people these days don't like that word to submit. But whether we know it or not, we all submit every day in some form or function. Whether we submit to the laws or when we submit it to our parents, we all, we're all we always submitting to someone. And the only thing that keeps us from submitting is that worst of all sins, and that's our pride. Our pride will commit us from, will keep us from being able to submit. So we need to remember to love them and to submit ourselves. It says when we honor and respect the ones in authority over us, we, we will then be able to follow Paul's next admission, which is be at peace among yourselves. Peace only comes when we submit to the authority God has placed over us. For the faithful minister, it is a submission to the Holy Spirit. For the wife, it is submission to the husband. For the children, it is submission to the parents. And for the church, it is submission to the faithful minister that minister over you. Only when these things are in place can we follow this last admission and be at peace. And we want to be at peace. We want others to see Jesus in us. We want to work in peace and unity. We want to love. We want to connect. We want to go and we want to grow. And as we live in peace, worship in peace, not only will we be more fruitful in our own lives, we will also see it evidenced in the church as it grows, as Christ's church grows. In conclusion, this is when y'all will respond. This is the charge. Will you as a church body accept this charge to you, committing to pray for, to esteem, to recognize, and to follow Jenny and DJ as pastors to submit to their authority and their guidance as we seek the Lord's will for the church. Will you accept this charge? Thank you. Amen. There's a public speaker in there somewhere, Tommy Aldrin. Hey, love you, man. Oh, that was so good. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back and play softly. We're going to have a time of prayer over DJ and his wife, Sarah, and over Jenny and her husband, Chili, my favorite pastor's husband in the world right there. <laughs> Chili, Chili Willie. DJ and Jenny, would you come and sit? Jenny and Chili, would you come and sit? And as we pray, we want to invite any member 
of the congregation during this time. Come up and pray over Chili and Jenny and over DJ and Sarah. Encourage them. Pray God's blessing over them. Tell them good job. Tell them how much you love them. And after we've done that for a while, and the rest of you, while we're not praying, we're going to worship. So if you all want to stand, and after we've done that, the lovely Laura Vogt is going to pray over Pastor Jenny. And our chairman of deacons, Kevin Helms, is going to pray over Pastor DJ. If you feel led, please come. Show your support. Pray a prayer blessing over our pastors. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your
the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by Your presence i
go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning, and we so humbly and graciously thank you, God, for sending everything that we need at the time that we need it. We thank you for DJ and for Sarah and their family, Lord. I'm so thankful that they are a part of our family. I thank you, God, for sending them here and for the service that they have already done. I pray, God, that you will be with them, that you will bless them. I thank you for him answering the call, Lord. Not today, not a few weeks ago, even a few years ago. He's had the reverend in front of his name for a while now, but you've had that reverend in front of his name since before he was born because you knew what you were creating him to do. You knew where you were sending. You knew who whose lives he would touch, Lord. And we thank you for that foresight. We just pray, God, for them, their family, that you will bless them, the things they do here at Antioch, the things they do out in the world. I pray, God, that you will just guide them, that they will always follow you, that they will lead us, Lord. And we put all of our faith in you, Lord. But we know sometimes putting our faith in you means putting our faith in other people, Lord. And we have faith and DJ and Sarah and her family, Lord, as they lead us, because they have faith in you. We will follow them because they follow you. We thank you, God, for every promise that you give us. We know that not all your promises sound good the way they come across, Lord, because one promise you make us is when we choose to pick up the cross and follow you, that the devil has his sights set on us, that his fiery darts will be aimed for us, Lord. And we know DJ and Sarah probably already felt some of these, Lord. We just pray, God, for your other promises, your promises of protection. Because even though the devil comes after us, when we choose to follow you, Lord, you promise us that you are there, and you will put a shield around us, that you will be with us and guide us through life, Lord. So we pray this, Lord. We pray for that hedge of protection around them, Lord. You will just be with our family. You will be with our hearts, Lord. so thankful for this time, Lord, that you have chosen for them to be at Antioch and serving us. In my heart, Lord, I pray, God, that they will always serve here. I pray that we will serve you together, Lord, till you call us home. But I pray mostly, Lord, that you would help us all to open our hearts and to serve you how you want us to and where you want us to. But I just pray, God, for your spirit to come down. And I don't even need to pray that, Lord, because it's already here. We've been feeling it for a long time. We're just so thankful for the peace that you give us, Lord, and knowing the decisions that we make are not even our decisions, Lord. They're your decisions. We're just choosing to listen and follow. So I thank you for Antioch, Lord, for the people here, Lord, who have decided to follow you, decided to trust you, and let you lead us. So just be, be with them. Be with us all, Lord. Help us to support them. Help us to love them. Help us to be there for them in whatever they need, whenever they need, Lord. We just ask that you will guide them from here on out. Help us all to be a family together, Lord, serving you in every way. We thank you, God. We love you. We love them. And we thank you for this day, Lord, and this ordination. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I just thank you for your call. God, I thank you, Lord, that you answer prayers. Lord, that you've heard Dave and I's prayer for years, asking and pleading and begging for somebody to come and to be there for our teenage children. And Lord, I thank you, God, for Jenny's obedience to the call. Lord, I just pray, God, that you would just fill her with your Holy Spirit now, Lord, that you would anoint her, oh God. Lord, that every fiery dart that the enemy means for evil, Lord, I pray, God, that a shield of protection would be around she and Chili, Lord. 
around their marriage, around their children, around their grandchildren. Lord, I pray, God, that everything that is meant for evil, Lord, that you would just turn it for their good, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, for the things that you've done in her life, Lord, to bring her to this point. So many times that the enemy tried to take her out, and Lord, you redeemed every one of those stories. And I pray, Lord, that Jenny would just continue to scream her testimony from the rooftops. Lord, because that is how she's an overcomer. And Lord, that is how she's so relevant and just so real with our teenagers and with our kids. That's what they understand. So many times my kids have said, Jenny's just awesome. She's just real. And that's what we need. And so, God, I pray, Lord, that you would just guard and protect their hearts. Lord, I pray, God, that when they get discouraged, when she feels tired, when she feels overwhelmed and overworked, Lord, when people are difficult, God, when she's wrongly accused, Lord, I pray that you would be her vindicator, Lord, that you would just stand for her, God. I pray, Lord, that when she feels tired, that she would just feel your strength, Lord, that you would renew her love for you, that you would renew her love for the ministry. God, help her to not grow weary in doing good, Lord, but to rejoice, God, because you have called her. Lord, we rejoice in just today and what this means for our church and for our church family. It's just such a a historic moment taking place here at Antioch. And Lord, we're just so thankful. And God, we recognize it. Lord, I pray for Chili that you would strengthen him. God, help him to be such a great support for Jenny, Lord. Help him to listen when she needs ears to listen. Help him to encourage when, she, when he needs to say a word, Lord, I pray, God, that you would let him know when to listen and when to speak. Strengthen their marriage, Lord. Just protect and guard over them, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. for the blessings you have bestowed upon Antioch Church. You have blessed us with many opportunities to serve you through inspired pastoral leadership and the hard work of many dedicated individuals. We celebrate today the addition of two new leaders and thank you for your gifts to them and their desire to use them here to your honor and glory. Through the study of your word, you have given us knowledge of your vision for Antioch Baptist Church. We ask for wisdom to use this knowledge to grow your kingdom as we love and keep on loving, connect and keep on connecting, go and keep on going, grow and keep on growing. Looking to the future, we are encouraged by the words of the Apostle Paul that we can accomplish all things through Christ who strengthens us. It is in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. 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 Come on, church. Y'all can go sit down. It's on. Go ahead. First of all, I'd just like to thank my wife and just tell her how proud I am of her. And I'd like to thank all of y'all for coming out. I appreciate everybody coming, the family and supporting us. Uh, DJ, thank you for you and your family as well. And just thank you God for this church. Y'all really welcomed us in here just like family and Greatly appreciated by that. Thank you. We got you back, bro. Thank you, Chili. We have one last order of business before we partake in the Baptist bird. The rest of you have been sitting and watching and no doubt feeling the presence of Almighty God. We've acknowledged God's call on DJ and God's call on Jenny, but now it's time for some of you to answer God's call on your heart. We're going to sing about that beautiful, wonderful, and powerful name of Jesus. And if there's any here that have felt God calling you to himself, calling you to that relationship, the gift of eternal life is available. The gift of encouragement and strength and a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit is available. If you need it, as we sing, 
come and get it. The altars are open, and we'd love to pray with you. Let's sing. Thank you. 
give the Lord praise somebody in his house. Well, God has called some folks. Amen. Luke Ward said his sister wasn't going to show him up. Luke Ward has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Amen. Luke, we're so proud of you. Thank you to all the children's church workers and nursery workers and everybody that thought, man, this kid has got some energy. God's got a plan for you. He's going to use that energy. And praise God, we all know the apple. Don't fall too far from the tree. Praise God. But hey, how many of you know God's got a call on his daddy too? Amen. Come on, church. That's our job. we got to call out the call. Something my father just shared with me. Do you see how God is bringing the next generation of the church and saying, I'm calling you today. Amen. Amen. And we have had some people that heard God's call to join Antioch as members. So I'm going to ask the Tuckers to come. Y'all come on up here and spin around. The Tuckers have been coming for many weeks. And they have decided, you know what, this is our home. And I'm going to ask Mitzi and her daughter Ashley to come. They've said the same thing. I mean, hey, it just can't get no better than this. Amen. Praise God. If you see God calling them to membership, can you just say amen and amen? Hallelujah. Before we eat fried chicken and before all of you stay and help stack the chairs and set up the tables, praise God. We're going to put a little, the spirit ain't worth a spit in the bucket with that little sweat. Amen. Thank you, Clint Eastwood. We're going to get set up. We're going to eat some chicken. But before that, I'm going to ask Elder Linwood Butler and his wife Donna to come and to present these gifts to DJ and his wife, and to Chili and Jenny, and to pray over the food. It's on, brother. You can go ahead and bless the food. You see, I'd like to have uh, DJ and Jenny come up here, if it will. The uh, church family has gotten some gifts for them for this very special uh, ordination service day. And... Uh, I look at 2023 is going to be some kind of year this year. We just, this church is so excited. I just see uh, so much happening with the youth, so much happening with DJ and Dave. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you for each and everything. I'm sorry, but the, uh, also, we've given a bouquet of flowers to Sarah and one to Jenny. And we'd like to. Uh, you know, thank them for that. And now as we prepare to uh, gather at the table, I will do a blessing so that we can uh, just get everything set up. And most gracious Heavenly Father, we just come before you just praising you and just giving thanks to you for this day that you bless us with, Lord. It's just such an awesome day, Lord. It's just so many things. It's so exciting of things happening at this church, Lord. I just pray that you just continue to be with Antioch, that we may be a shining light for this community. And Lord, now as we prepare to gather at the table, I pray that you will bless us for to be used for our nourishment, our bodies, and with that, to follow your kingdom here on this earth. In your name we do pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Stay and eat with us.